Do you recognize this woman? Or what about this man? If not, this is MMA guru and Nina Drama, two of the biggest MMA influencers. One makes these kinds of videos. Do you eat cereal? Uh, yeah. Would you put milk first and then cereal, or cereal and then milk? Make sure you stay tuned to see what it is and you check out his reaction. The other one makes these kinds of videos. <laughs> Rap, 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 he's dead, you idiot! Rap! I can't watch this dumbass sport anymore. Now, this past weekend, these two got into a bit of a back and forth, and it started with this tweet. Honestly, so disrespectful of the UFC cameraman at the UFC 307 press conference to be like, nah, you guys gotta see this in the middle of her question. Honestly, pathetic behavior and not funny. Now, this tweet set off the MMA community with a lot of people upset at the MMA guru for making fun of Amy. One of those people included Nina. She would respond to the MMA guru with this video. Take a look. This video is for you, Nalu. Um, baby, I didn't call you evil. I called you vile and an excrement stain on society. That's what I called you, because that's what you are. And all of the negative comments and all of the, that I'm getting on my page right now, thank you, because it only drives engagement to my page, but you know how that works, because that's your whole MO, isn't it? And that's your target audience, negative, angsty, teenage boys, 13, 14, 15 year olds. That's who's coming to your defense right now. That's your demographic, babe. That's not my demographic. My demographic is grown men. The analytics are there. You can always check them. Now to call a spade a spade, I would completely disagree with this. I think Demographically, they share a lot of the same audience. There's probably a lot of crossover between Nina and MMA Guru. Now, mind you, she does have, you know, a bigger following on TikTok, which probably would include like a younger audience versus MMA Guru. He's, you know, pretty much strictly on YouTube. That's where he is his biggest, where he gets all of his views and success. You know, she's a little bit more diversified, but again, I think demographically, they probably share a very similar audience. Grown men who don't come for women for being successful, but value and appreciate them. That's my demographic. But you wouldn't know anything about that. Um, but listen, I know you like to talk about me and I could see it in your face how happy you were when I mentioned you for the first time in the last two years and you just couldn't keep my name out of your mouth. And I'm sure you've seen my pictures that are all over the internet. It wasn't beautiful pictorial. I'm on skateboards and covers and sweatshirts and I'm on billboards all over the world and commercials and because I was a model for 12 years and Playboy was one of the many weird jobs flex I did. but okay. Um, but it was also one of the most beautiful. I mean the spread's great. If you haven't checked it out anyone who's looking you should. You should. Um 18 over, right? My demographic they're they're men though so I don't have to talk to them like that. But I digress. You know, if you do want, I can send you a copy that did sell out pretty quick, considering it was one of the best covers uh, in Playboy history. I can give it. People lie about their age on these platforms every day, all day, especially young kids. I mean, think about it when you were 13, 12, you know, when you're on some platforms you weren't probably supposed to be on, you just lied. Like my first fa Facebook account I ever made, I don't know, I was probably like 12 or 13. I'm on there, I'm probably like 40 or 50 by now. I mean, so like these demographics she's talking about, they definitely aren't 100% accurate. And again, I think the majority of her fan base probably between 14 to like 30 to be honest that's i know it's a wide range but same thing with probably mma guru if anything i think he has probably a older audience his videos are longer you have to have you know a longer attention span she makes mostly like short form content other than like her interviews of course which those are still only like 20 minutes or so so once again, I'm just calling a spade a spade. I don't have a, a, a horse in this race, but you know, it is what it is. You that gift you want. <sighs> Lastly, before I forget, you are 
a literal prostitute. You get on your knees and you beg for $5 all the time. Don't be shy, we see you do it. I don't have to beg. I'm also a playmate, yes, but I've never gotten on my knees or spread my legs for anyone. And I know that's a huge shocker to you. And I think that's what you hate the most is that I have all of this success and I've done it through actual hard work. And let's not forget, I have some great assets too. And I, I do use those and I don't shy away from it. And I don't ever deny it either. But I would like to say that maybe using my assets is a more positive way to market myself than being a human piece of shit, being negative, trolling people for no reason who, oh my goodness, I got cut off. I didn't even realize how long this video was. It was only three minutes. Imagine yours was 40. <laughs> you must have so much time. I don't because I have a real job. Um, anyway, oh gosh, what was I saying? I guess you'll just see me around. But this will be the last time I ever say your name. Now, the MMA guru would respond quickly to Nina Drama. He would post this. I'll be posting the Nina Drama Exposed video in about 30, 40 minutes. I don't think I've ever cooked someone like this before. I'm the morally repulsive one for a fat joke. Wait till you guys see this. He then followed up with this tweet. Just posted my video exposing Nina Drama. She called me evil and reprehensible. So I thought I'd do some digging and found out a lot. One of the biggest cookings I've ever given in my career. Career. You don't want to miss this one. It's because I said something about Nina the other day because I don't know about you guys, but I think someone who has just admitted to using their tits to gain views, someone who's just admitted to that and to doing that on a platform accessible to 13 year olds, I think we have a name for those types of people. And I happen to speak out on stream not only against Nina, but against every own, not like Nina's one of these, because she doesn't have one of these, but there's a lot of women online right now that are selling themselves online in a very sexually provocative manner to an app and a platform. You know, one thing about the MMA guru is, man, he's really quick with his responses. I mean, he cooked this video up in an hour and had it posted in live. So whether you like him, whether you hate him, I know he's controversial. Gotta respect the grind. Gotta respect the grind. Form accessible to 13 year olds. With no age verification. Now it'd be very different if you were doing this on a platform that was 18 plus. That would be a very different situation. Where maybe you needed a credit card to do it. Or you needed some kind of age verification to prove so you could access it. That would be a little different. But when you admit to using your assets for views in a sexually provocative manner, I'm not going to show them in today's video, but you know what I'm talking about on Twitter. Every video she nearly does is her shaking them around like, watch this, watch this, everyone. And this platform, Twitter, is accepted. So I can tell he's trying to avoid saying some words that is going to trigger, you know, YouTube to come in and demonetize or even age restrict the video. But, you know we can kind of make out what he's trying to say here. I obviously can't say it either. We're both on YouTube, but we can make out what he's saying. Possible to 13 year olds. And I know people could say, well, Nina Drama doesn't know who's watching her platform and who's actually on her Twitter. A lot of them actually seem to be 50 year old men that watch your stuff and glaze you and say, God, you're so stunning. Man, it's amazing what you're doing for the community. And I get that. Maybe Nina doesn't know who her audience is. I mean, it's not like there's videos online of her taking pictures with these fans and yet still using sexually provocative moves with her assets to get views on Twitter, is there? It's not like there's videos online of her meeting all of her fans and finding out who her fans are because they're all young, AF. You know who... So what do, you, what do you guys think about the point he, he's trying to make here? I mean, is it up to Nina to control who her fan base is going to be? Is it up to her to be a role model for these fans on her personal social media accounts? Not saying I, I don't 
agree or disagree with MMA Guru here, but, you know, a genuine question, is she supposed to be, like, PG-13, you know, if that's just not who she is? Because if you look at a lot of other influencers across other industries, I think they do a lot of similar things as Nina Drama, not saying it's the right thing to do, but if we're going to call her out, there would be a lot of calling out we would have to do. Your fans are. If you need to get down on your knees to take a picture with a fan, you know exactly who your fans are. Yet you admit here to using your assets for views, and you do that. Putting yourself for donations that don't even cover a premium Zoom account. Putting myself out there for donations. Reading chat messages in a live stream. If only there was something worse I could be doing. Okay, maybe he's money. right. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just thought I'd play this real quick. You don't seem to have a problem with him. Let's have a little listen. Yeah, I said that. Super good. Um, I don't really watch women's MMA, but if I do, I root for the ugly one. 100%. I'll tell you why. Because like... How funny <laughs> is that, Nina? <laughs> He just shamed women. That's also such a bad argument from Nina Drama because, of course, she's talking about Super Chats on YouTube. The same thing all the Twitch live streamers get. They all get donations. You know, pretty much all live streamers rely on memberships and donations. You know, I, don't, I haven't seen any clips of the MMA guru begging for anyone to donate to him. It's just something people do that want to engage with the streamer. If you want to get somebody's attention, put in $5.00. And the MMA guru will answer your question. I don't really see that as begging. So kind of a weak point by Nina. Again, you know, I'm trying to stay unbiased between all of this. I don't have any horse in the race. So how funny is that? And you asked him if he said it, provoking him to go further in on the topic. How funny is that, Nina? That's so funny. You hold back that laugh. Hold back that laugh, Nina. Just like your boyfriend holds back his tears every time you collaborate with a fighter. You hold back that laugh. It's so funny. Just hold back the laugh. Oh, God, it's so funny. He's about to go off on ugly women. This is going to be great for my content. I can make money out of this, so I'm okay with it. What's this clip, Nina? <laughs> All right, next question. Do you believe fat shaming is okay if the person you're fat shaming is someone you love? I'm sure you did this because you know Sean Strickland would have only nice things to say about fat people. I think fat shaming is always okay. I Immediate smile. Fat shaming's always okay. You're friends with this guy, remember? There's nothing worse than being next to a fat, smelly mother And the most human thing- All smiles. From Nina Drama. No tantrum. No rage. No standing up for fat women. What's going on, Nina? I don't get you views and money, so you have to stand up to me. Thing you could do is telling a fat, smelly motherfucker to put down the fork. You know, if you can't see your. How funny is that, Nina? It's so funny when Strickland does it because Strickland gets you. Honestly, this was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Nina is having the MMA guru on your case. Probably the worst person to come at Nina drama. You know, they, they both are peers. They both are around the same fame level, I guess you could say, especially when it comes to, you know, MMA content. They're very similar, you know. Two million views on an interview. Isn't that funny when Strickland does it? He constantly is negative without a purpose. I am constantly negative. The world deserves it. And that's the difference. And then something about Helen Yee where she faked some shit. Or didn't fake some shit. That's the difference. So that's the difference. So Sean Strickland's a really good guy. And he never really puts a foot wrong. Wrong one. I'll get to Bisping in a second. Can't lie. The MMA guru is kind of cooking here, making some solid points, coming with some video proof as well. This is probably the last person you want on your case if you're Nina Drama. And I'm sure she has some kind of PR representing her since she is with the UFC and all that stuff. She probably has her own PR. And I'm sure they're thinking to themselves, you know, this is the worst case scenario. The MMA guru and his fan base coming and attacking Nina Drama. But... You know, I guess you could say she kind of did it to herself, to be honest. Sean Strickland is a really good guy. I know he said some things you disagree with. <laughs> it's not like Sean Strickland's ever made a fun of a guy who died who just left a 10-month-year-old ten ten baby behind. Brazilian fighter got hit by a fucking bus and died. 
No one gave a fuck about that guy. When I read it, I was like, God damn, dude, if you can't dodge a bus, that's why you're not in the UFC. That was my first joke when I read that. And I stand by it. It's fucking hilarious. I'm not going after Strickland for this. But you're going after me for making a fat joke. But you're friends with Sean Strickland who makes fun of people who have just died. An excrement stain on society. Let's talk about John Jones. You know he beat his wife. I freaking love John Jones. And before y'all make it weird and leave a bunch of how did she get the Jones interview comments, I'll tell you, before I started covering MMA, I was a comedy content creator. How was that working out? Before the UFC just straight up platformed you out of fucking nowhere. Uh, John and I used to follow each other, but never spoke. I saw John backstage with 285 and asked the UFC social team if I could do a quick piece with John. They were a little hesitant, but for some reason, the UFC took a chance on me and said yes. And we waited for him backstage to finish the press conference. John saw me. He was like, hey, I know you. Again, if you're Nina's PR, you're, you're just literally like this. Oh, my God. Why did we take that picture with John Jones? Why did we do that? That probably wasn't the smartest tweet, the smartest photo to put out. Man. MMA guru is cooking. Let's, let's keep listening. You and said yes to sitting down with me for 10 minutes while on his way. And that's how I got the Jones interview. You guys have no idea how grateful I am for Johnny Bones. He changed my life by giving me 10 minutes of his time. I'm forever grateful. Thanks, Johnny. And because he gave you 10 minutes and made you relevant in the uh, UFC scene with interviews, because he did that with you, you freaking love him. That's all it takes to be a good person to you benefit you financially john jones want to talk about a stain on society he repeatedly anything to say about that nina seeing as you're so moralistic and amazing and righteous and stand up for what's right so look there you guys have it please be sure to leave your thoughts about all this craziness in the comment section down below who do you guys agree with who do you guys disagree with i would love to hear what you guys have to say i did take a look at nina drama's most recent post and under the comments people were just grilling her cooking her saying mma guru exposed her she got destroyed so you know, I guess from the public view, I guess we kind of already know who won this. Nina Drama also said at the end of her video that she won't be mentioning the MMA guru ever again. And, you know, for her sake, that's probably the best idea she's ever had. But there you guys have it. Please remember to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this video next.